Hi, this is Michelle Getzinger here with my cooking show called The Frustrated Foodie. The whole point of my cooking show is you come learn how to cook with me because I'm still learning myself. And we're learning how to make either vegan options, uh, plant-based options, um, and just basically healthy food in general. And today with me, I have my daughter Kylie and her fiance, Harrison. And we're gonna do banana bread and fried plantain. The first thing we have to do is um, get the bananas to mash them. I have them in two separate bowls just because it's um, helpful for measuring and mixing. This one right here is the um, egg replacement. So since we're making banana bread, you can use bananas as an egg replacement instead of um, getting your vegan egg replacement mixer because that cuts out an extra step plus the bananas just add more banana flavor so it doesn't hurt for this i used um three bananas that are a bit mushy and brown those ones are the best and that is your egg replacement but if you wanted to do this with eggs you would use three eggs and then right here we have um about four and a half medium bananas and that's going to be the actual the rest of the part of the banana bread so first we will mash these up smash smash the banana smash them up this is a lot like a like that white potato you don't want to over emulsify or over mix it because it'll become gummy so you you literally just want to have it mashed enough that we're able to um to mix it up and having a few chunks in the final product of the banana bread isn't bad because um, it adds an extra like texture to it. It's pretty good. So this, this banana bread is completely vegan and it is also gluten free. So there's no dairy in it, no eggs, and no gluten. We're doing a half a cup of coconut oil. You can also use the solid version, but if you get this liquid version, it makes it a little bit easier to measure it all out. And then with this one, I do want to talk about it. So this is um, coconut palm sugar. It's, I thought that coconut sugar, all organic coconut sugar was the same until I used regular coconut sugar. I don't know what the difference with palm is in it, but it packs a lot better. It's like, um, like brown sugar. But if you get regular coconut sugar, it's really grainy and it's actually kind of gross in certain things. So make sure you get the palm sugar and that it packs well. So we're gonna do a cup of coconut palm sugar in this cup. In this bowl, we're gonna put the coconut sugar and the oil in it and mix that well. And so we just mix that first so that we get it all coated with the oil in here because if you add the um, bananas, it'll, it'll make it take a lot longer. Then in this bowl, we'll just take the egg replacement um, bananas that you have and mix it in here. This, it's not completely necessary to separate them, but it does make it easier on yourself if you um, do it one at a time, because if you have a lot of bananas all at once, it's hard to stir. two and one fourth cups of gluten-free all-purpose baking mix. It's really important that you get the all-purpose baking mix and not this, it, this brand is great, but don't get just all-purpose flour because the baking mix actually has other stuff in it. So if you use all-purpose flour, you'll have to use um, like baking soda and stuff like that. And really this is about shortcuts and learning how to do these things so you can cook every day. We're not trying to prepare gourmet meals, we're trying to prepare family meals. Um, and it's much quicker, so definitely cash in on things that make your life easier, such as the, um, the baking mix, or make your own baking mix. You have to watch, this brand has a buttermilk version, and it's really easy to buy the buttermilk version, and it has buttermilk in it, so it wouldn't fit the vegan, you know, completely plant-based. 
Yeah, because a, a lot of things that are gluten free aren't also vegan, mm -hmm. and a lot of things that are vegan have gluten in them, so it's hard to find both. Again, we're doing two and one fourth cups, but I'm just mixing it a little bit before we add the final cup to. So you think it's easier to beat it by hand than to try and beat it with a mixer, right? Um, yeah, and if you beat it with a mixer, it might become gummy. gummy. Yeah, it's not super hard, especially if you get the ripe, mushy bananas. It's, it's a pretty easy thing to mix. And again, if you don't mash them like super well, that's okay because it turns out well anyway. Mm -hmm. Now you can add other things to this banana bread recipe. If you wanted to put chocolate chips in it, there's vegan chocolate chips. You could put um, toasted nuts, walnuts, all depending on what your diet allows. So um, for extra flavor, we are going to add some nutmeg and cinnamon. And I'm just gonna put a dash of it in. Mm -hmm. You can add to taste and then a little bit of nutmeg in here. And then one of our favorite ingredients, um, vanilla paste. I prefer vanilla paste over um, vanilla extract. It has a little bit more of an intense flavor and you can also see the little pieces of the vanilla bean. Inside of it, which it makes a huge difference than the um, like chemically made vanilla flavor. Mm -hmm. This tastes so much better. And you only need a little bit because it goes a long way. Yeah, I can literally smell it from over here. It smells so good. All right. So, mix that in and then I'm gonna add this. Pretty amazing if you think about it, what's in this recipe and how simple it is and how good the bread turns out. And it's a great way to recycle those old bananas that are just getting a little bit too ripe. If you get them, these bananas, they're too ripe and you're not ready to make banana bread, throw them in the freezer until you're ready. And you can just take out four or five bananas from the freezer. And then you just mix it up until it gets that nice brown color all around. This is the egg replacement that I often use in recipes. Um, I agree with Kylie in this case, the banana works the best, but um, this is the, the brand Namaste. Um, I got it on Amazon. It's pretty easy to come across. You can find it in Whole Foods as well. So next, I'm just going to oil this pan that we're going to bake it in. Um, you can use a regular bread pan or anything like this. Um, I'm just going to get some coconut oil and rub it along the sides. You don't need too much, but it just helps for when you're pulling it out. I came up with this recipe when my mom wanted some, like, something sweet and freshly baked because there's not a lot of cookie recipes or bread or dessert recipes for that are both vegan and gluten-free, like we were saying earlier. And this original recipe was came with that the um, gluten-free all-purpose baking mix. Their website had a recipe for banana bread, but it wasn't vegan. So I took that recipe and I made it vegan and I used um, coconut oil and ban uh, bananas instead of eggs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that's where this came from. After we oil the pan, we're just gonna put the mix into it. And this is different than making regular baked goods. I'm not very good at baking normally. And this won't rise as much as 
normal dough will. So don't be alarmed that it fills up the pan. And then I like to put some of the coconut sugar on top. And when you bake it, it just kind of crisps up nicely and it gives you a nice um, look to it whenever you pull it out. Yeah. So. And there we go. There we go. Voila. Voila. Go ahead and put it in the oven. How long, at uh, which degrees? Um, 350. And you'll want to put it in there originally for 45 minutes and then check on it and see if after 45 minutes this on top is starting to burn. You can put a piece of tin foil on it to stop it. We usually like to leave it because we like the top to be crispy. But if you don't, then you can put some tin foil over it and cook it for 25 more minutes to get everything on the inside fully cooked. So what's the total cook time? 45 plus 25. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So let's set the alarm and we'll check on it in a little bit. In the meantime, next are fried plantains. So you've probably seen these in the grocery store and been like, what are they? They're funky looking bananas. Um, they're usually close close to the bananas, but not right next to the bananas. They're um, over by the sweet potatoes and they are very starchy. It's called a plantain. If you take this home and try to eat it like a banana, you will gag and throw up. It is not sweet like a banana. It is very different. But we're gonna go ahead and fry some today because this is another sweet treat that you can have that is um, very good to eat. So Harrison's gonna go ahead and peel them and you'll see once he starts trying to peel them, they're not like a banana. You literally have to fight and wrestle with, <laughs> with it. Yes, this is a super, super simple recipe. So this past summer we went to Belize um, we stayed in the uh, rainforest in a, like basically a tree house, Harrison, Kylie, my other daughter, Avery, Marty and I, and um, we ate a lot of plantains. Plantains is, they are a very big staple in Central America, South America, um, and it's a great food. You'll often see them fried and eaten with almost every meal, like with the rice and beans as well, which someday we're gonna do a show on how to make gallo pinto, which is rice and beans. Yes, it's not as glamorous as a, a banana, huh? As you can see, the color inside is a much creamier yellow color than, than the banana. It's just like when I was doing the... Uh, oh <laughs> yeah, watch cutting into yourself. We don't want to lose a finger. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your favorite way of having plantains when we were in Belize? So personally, um, a lot of people like things that are, are sweet, but I tend to have more of a savory too. So it goes the same with sweet potatoes. I would prefer them to have like a seasoned salt on them, salt and pepper, something like that. Um, in Belize, they fry them and sometimes put like cayenne pepper and stuff like that. And I prefer them that way. So a little bit of spice, um, a little bit more of a savory flavor. However, it's also really good with things like honey or coconut oil, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. So we're gonna do them two different ways today. We're gonna do them the way that um, Harrison's is uh, <laughs> We're gonna put this one aside. Yeah. We're, we'll try again with, with the plantain number two. We're just gonna right in there. Usually these plantains are just like bananas in the aspect of when they get a little bit darker and riper, they're a little easier to peel, but they're still a real pain. Um, so we're gonna do a, a savory version with some cayenne pepper, salt, pepper, and we're gonna fry them in coconut oil. And then we're gonna do a sweet version where I'm just gonna fly them, fry, fly, fly them, we're gonna fly them fry them with some honey and uh, a little bit of that vanilla paste because that's how I like them. These... Oh, oh man. These suckers are tough. <laughs> man. I have to say this is the hardest plantain I've ever peeled. Of course. Yes. Just for you. Just so you could keep your expectations in check. So... I like everything to have a nice presentation as best that we can, and I like to cut plantains on, the, on an angle. Kind of makes them look cooler when you fry them. So the nice thing about these kind of recipes is you're learning with us how to cook. Um, 
you got to make it up as you go. Honestly, I know that people really don't want to hear that. They want a recipe. They want to know exactly how to do things. But if you're learning how to cook, you need to learn how to do this stuff on the fly and what you have in your in your cupboard. So we didn't have just straight up cayenne pepper. But we were able to find chili powder and uh, red curry powder. So it depends on which direction you want to go. We're probably going to go ahead and do the, which one did you want to do? The curry? I mean, I think they would actually be good mixed together. together. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to do a little mixture of these two together with salt and pepper. And then we're going to go ahead and fry our first one. Um, that's going to be the savory version. So what Harrison's going to do is he's going to cut them on an angle and they're going to be chip thickness. Yep. Around like what a banana chip would be. Now plantains are, are very starchy, very similar to kind of like a sweet potato consistency. And they don't have a ton of flavor. They can be baked, deep fat fried, just regular, you know, sauteed. There's a lot you can do with them. But they look a lot like a banana. In fact, it's kind of funny when you look at their, well, I'll pull one out so you can see it. They look like little sad faces, <laughs> don't they? Some of them have like little eyeballs where they look sad. Like, look, this guy looks so sad too. <laughs> little sad plantains, because we're gonna eat you. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and throw them in there. We're gonna get some of this. We're just gonna use this liquid coconut oil. Okay, we're gonna drizzle a little bit of coconut oil over top. Again, like one or two tablespoons, just enough to get them coated because we need something to help the spices stick to them. Then we're gonna get um, Just, I wouldn't put a lot because it's yeah. going to be hot. <laughs> just kind of show everyone. And if you want to sprinkle it instead of putting it yeah, in. I think okay. I'm going to just sprinkle yeah. it. So we're going to just dust them lightly. And depending on your heat tolerance, what you want and what you like will depend on how much you put on. Oh, it's going to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and give her some salt and pepper. So we'll get you a spoon and you can kind of toss them. In real life at home, I'm sure you just use your fingers, but since we're going to try and be somewhat proper on TV. <laughs> and you just want them to have a nice even coat over top of all of them. Okay, next step is we're going to move over to the frying pan and we're going to get it heated up. You can, you can tell when the pan is ready to go, when the oil starts to separate the way that it is. So I think we're good to go to start putting them in there. Now, I don't recommend that you just dump the whole thing in. You've got to put them in kind of like Harrison's doing a little bit at a time and keep an eye on them because they can burn pretty quickly. And you might not be able to fit the whole plantain in there at one shot. Just feel free to generously keep it nice and lubricated in there. <laughs> what are some of the um, other things you like to cook? So I like stir frying anything really. So mm -hmm. I do a lot of veggies um, being in a family that can't really eat, uh, we don't eat gluten and we don't eat dairy. So when I'm cooking dinner for the whole family, I have to do things with veggies mostly and meat. Uh, so I'll usually stir fry something. Um, we're not vegan, obviously, since we're doing meat. So I use eggs a lot, um, things like pad thai, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Uh, peppers, onions, garlic, anything like that is always good. Lots of cabbage. So nothing really in specific. Mm -hmm. I tend to go into it with an open mind similar to this where whatever's in the fridge or available I'm gonna to try to make a meal out of it. And I think that that is the most valuable skill in cooking is learning how to one improvise and number two use what you have at your hands at your mm -hmm. disposable disposal. Um, Harrison's mom has a similar autoimmune problem. Um, her diet's a little bit different than mine but uh, he's been been learning how to 
to deal with those things as well. And luckily his grandma, Nona, um, she makes fresh piccalilli and fresh sauerkraut on, mm -hmm. on the countertop. And I've had it and it's absolutely amazing. So Harrison's had a lot of experience um, being around a family that does cook a lot and loves cooking, right? Yeah. I mean, it's one of your favorite things to do, you yeah, and Kylie too, which so is nice. Kind of looking for this sort of uh, color on them. A nice brown. Nice golden brown, almost a little bit of a, you can get a little bit of a crunch Crisp, from them yep, too. Yep. Especially since we cut them into chip sizes, they're gonna probably cook through like that. So just like always, we're you gotta sample things and, and taste them as you go. Harrison's giving this one a try. It's kind of hard to tell when they're done. They'll get a little bit soft in the middle when they're finished or crispy mm. on the outside. Yep. Is it spicy? No, not, it actually might need a little bit more of uh, salt probably. Okay, go for it. And that's why you've gotta, you gotta sample it. And remember, when you're doing a savory, savory version of something, you want to make sure you're a little bit heavier on the salt than you would normally be, just to bring all that flavor out. And plantains are like a white potato. They're kind of open to a lot of different spices. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they're kind of bland on their own. Uh, garlic powder or onion powder would also work very well with this. And uh, Cajun seasoning is also very good. Down in Belize, they actually consider themselves to be a form of Cajun. Uh, they say that they're, what was it? They, Creole. They're Creole. So they use very similar seasonings to uh, the French and the Spaniards and things like that. So, exactly. So they have a very diverse diet down there. And because of that, the seasoning on things like plantains is very good. I think we're good. I like um, the sweet version of it, so I'm going to do use the same ingredients that Kylie used. I'm going to go ahead and use the vanilla, cinnamon, and nutmeg, and my sweetener is going to be um, sour wood honey. I've turned into be a little bit of a honey snob by accident. In North Carolina, they have the sour wood tree where they're getting the honey from, and it has some anti-inflammatory properties to it, and I've totally been loving the taste more than the anti-inflammatory that goes along with it. So I've been using this for everything. So we went ahead and we cut up our plantains same way as we did the other ones. I'm gonna go ahead and get my, uh, my oil. Get it ready in there. Just lightly cover it. Really, you don't even need a full tablespoon. Honey goes a long way. And this is, if you have the, the frying pan too high, it'll burn it. So you're gonna have to keep an eye on that. Put just a tiny little bit of vanilla paste in here. And this is gonna make it the sweet version. And this is what I'm gonna feed my husband for lunch. He's gonna get some of these sweet plantains. He's not allowed to have any pepper right now, so he can't have the savory ones. And again, if you don't like nutmeg, don't put nutmeg in. If you like pumpkin spice, put pumpkin spice in. It's so versatile. Go ahead and stir it up. But one thing that you're not gonna believe that you should do anytime you're cooking with these sweet things is you need to put a little bit of salt. It helps bring out the flavor of the sweetness and makes it more well-rounded on your palate. Just give it a little toss here. And we're just gonna go ahead and stir it on up. All right, and then I'm gonna direct this back to Harrison so he can fry these ones up for me. There you go, sir. I'm back. He's back. They smell really good. Yeah. Now when you go to take these out when they're finished, you do not want to put these on paper towels. They'll be way too sticky and stick to it and be gross. So this you just want to put on a regular plate. Now this is one of those things that you want to just make sure you have your undivided attention when you're cooking them. As soon as you walk away, they will turn black and burn and they'll be ruined. Trust me, I've done it 
almost every time I've cooked them. So don't leave your station when you're cooking plantains. Just pay attention, be patient, wait until they're done before you move on to your next project. Also, when adding sweet and sugar, they're gonna burn a little bit faster because of the starch, the added starch. Um, so definitely, when, if you do like a sweet flavoring, for sure, they'll cook a little bit faster than savory. You can kind of see, if you get up here close, um, they're already cooking differently with what you're cooking. Because of the on. sugar. Yeah. So if they, yeah, these. we can probably turn it down a little bit. And it's such a nice, it's such a nice easy snack to, or side to any meal that doesn't take much effort. And plantains, they stay, um, they stay good for a long time. You just leave them sit out. Do not put them in the refrigerator. Let them sit out on your counter. So again, the importance of constantly tasting it along the process. Um, we've discovered there's not enough sweetness on our sweet ones, so we're gonna just drizzle a little bit of honey, or as my daughter Avery would say when she was little, peanut on the top. And then the savory ones definitely don't need anything. And then next, we're gonna pull out the banana bread. So with the magic of TV, we've already made one that's ready for you because the other one's gonna be another half an hour. So this is the, um, the banana bread, and we're gonna go ahead and take it out and plate it up so you can see what it looks like. Look how beautiful that is. Comes out in a beautiful loaf. Okay, now we're gonna cut that baby up. And again, you could put chocolate chips in here, you could put walnuts, pecans, whatever you want to add to it. We like banana bread, just straight up banana bread. Um, oh, we go ahead and cut it. We're gonna cut it with a meat cleaver because that's how we roll. So this is our show on bananas and plantains and what you can do with them. I can smell, it smells so good. And you can see that nice crust that Kylie was talking about on the top, how moist it is on the inside. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and plate it and we're gonna try each one of these. If you want something a little bit sweeter, if it's not sweet enough for you, you can drizzle some maple syrup on top, some agave you know, syrup. Um, you could also do honey. Um, and what was the other suggestion? Oh, serve it up with tea, coffee. It's just a nice little snack. You can also put whipped cream on it if you want. Okay guys, you wanna try this with me? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take this one. Mm, that's really good. Mm -hmm. You can taste the coconut oil and the, the top is really crispy. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Nice and spongy mm -hmm. too. That's pretty amazing. For just being bananas and flour mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just some seasoning, it's really not much at all. Very good. All right. I'm going to try the um, keep with the sweet. I'm going to try the sweet one next. These are very good too. Mm -hmm. They're nice and crispy. I like them crispy like that. Yep. And then so good for you too. And then the last one we're going to try is the savory, which out of the plantains, I think is my favorite. <laughs> I've never had them savory before, so it's mm -hmm. really good. And the curry is just right. Here's the actual bread that we made after it was in the oven for a little bit. We're gonna put it back in to brown it a little bit more, but just so you can see what we were working on. Thanks again for watching our banana and plantains episode on the Frustrated Foodie. And thanks again for learning how to cook with us and being with us through this process. We appreciate it. Any likes or comments, um, please just put them down below. And thanks again for your support and see you next time.